What's up, guys and gals? I'm your host, Mike Pugh of the FPC Virtual Channel, and you're tuning in to the OBS Open Broadcaster Software Studio. What you're looking at here is actually something that I just worked on. Um, I'm going along the lines of working with differing color sources. So if you want to understand what it's all about, for me per se, I like to make backgrounds. Like I put this white background up so that way I could look and appear as if I'm in a clean background area with nothing behind me. So I basically remove my green screen background, my physical background, and I place myself in a location on my computer using the digital technologies of chroma key and through the OBS studio open broadcasting software studio and it allowed me to do this so I believe that these colors colors that you see that I actually pulled up I got the blue like the navy blue the pink the uh, more like sky blue white black and red those different colors I chose as color source it's a source that you can choose as an option through your sources. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six color sources. And if you want to use those as backgrounds, so let's go and show y'all folks how that will work. All I have to do is drag it and then underlay it. So I would have to put it under my video camera. So now I have a red background. See? And let's go with the black one now. I'm going to be doing a tutorial to show y'all folks how to do that, but I just want you to, you know, visibly see what I'm doing and I'm layering pretty much and putting these under, hold on, which source was that? Let me try to grab the correct source. Sorry about that. There we go. Like so, and so on and so forth. So you can use any of these color schemes as backdrops or backgrounds and rather than having like a virtual background or some sort of a photo image of something um, and I think it's pretty pretty awesome because you might not want to create your own color backgrounds on your own because it takes some time it's time consuming so they automatically have color sources set up so if you folks want to tune into that tutorial check it out it's on the way all right, so here we go. We're going to go with this tutorial, and hopefully y'all folks like it. If you do, feel free to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more, etc., etc. You can also share it socially in all your social communities if you feel that this is going to help other people. Cool. Now, say you wanted to create maybe a red backdrop. I don't know. I did a defaulted one. Let me delete this, remove it out. So um, my webcam, in order to get the webcam, say you needed a webcam, you have to have a webcam either on your laptop device or convertible device for that particular maybe Windows convertible device or touchscreen device. If it doesn't have a built-in webcam, you're going to definitely have to buy and purchase an external webcam, but I highly recommend for you to purchase one that has high quality resolution, HD resolution, pixel quality, and be able to produce really, really crisp looking you know pictures or video I should say so once you get that done now you incorporate that video webcam onto your actual OBS studio project so whenever you're recording you can bring it in how you can bring it in let's delete this one or remove it I should say so don't worry about media source Windows capture and audio input capture these are just stuff that I had preset in another project that I was working on. What you're going to do is click plus down here and that's going to bring any of these objects up which are capture devices or sources and then what you're going to do is look for the capture type of video. So you're going to look for video capture device and then click it with your mouse or if you're on a touch screen just tap it and then you could create an actual defaulted name if you wanted to it automatically comes out as a default or you can change it to something else so maybe you wanted to call it video one or a cap one I don't know whatever you want to call it that's up to you 
then you can click add existing as well if you have a pre-existing capture device that's already on because if it's already on in another scene or another location maybe a different scene collection location I'll talk about that in some other videos other tutorials then it will be able to be effective and used as well again and you don't have to add it multiple times and nine times out of ten it won't let you add that same one if it's already being used. So let's click uh, Video Capture Device 3 since it's added already and click OK. Now I'm in so I can maneuver it, move it wherever I want, stuff like that, resize it, drag it and drop it where I want it to go. That's one of the things you can do. Now say I wanted to bring in that red backdrop, right? So what you're going to do is click the plus again which is to add a source and you're going to go to Color Source and you're going to click color source or tap it and do the same thing. So if you already have pre-existing ones, you can do that at existing or you can create a new one and call it what you want to call it. I'm going to call it red just to identify it and then you can change different things. This is actually the properties which you can click OK then go back and right click it and enter it again. So in order for you to enter any of your objects that you bring in which are your sources you're gonna have to double click so double clicking it will bring it bring you to the object so you'll see these little red dots on the corners and the centers left and right top and bottom the same thing with the webcam so keep that in mind that's pretty much how you are gonna maneuver the actual object or source and then what you're gonna do is right click this is after you clicked OK so you wanted to change it to something else we're gonna click properties at the very bottom show, show you all that again right click go down to properties click properties and then you're able to access the controls for it so you can click select color say we wanted to just change the color you can type in the number I believe well you can't can't type in a number you can click select color and then in here you can type in a number. If you know the actual number, you can do that. If you want to change the color scheme through using maybe like this kind of palette thing where you get the option to go from one ranging color to the next and different extremes of, of those colors, that's up to you. Or you can go with these basic colors which are defaulted. So we're going to go for the brick red rather than the hot red because the hot red is going to affect the retina and it's going to cause some issues for some people with color problems so we're going to go with this one and you can also go with the width and the height if you want to change it so let's scroll this down a little bit and maybe I wanted to add a width to it so we're going to add and double it to 800 now it's covering my face which is pretty cool now we're going to add a little bit of height to it, maybe add like 50. Oop, sorry about that. Four, it should be 450. And that will bring it almost to the full scale that I wanted it to be. So then you can drag the corner as well, and that fits like that. Really simple, right? You don't have to have the exact width and height. That's going to take a while to get it. But um, you can drag, like I said, the corners. So there you go with that click OK now how do I overlay my actual camera well you're gonna go either double click where the camera was at and you'll see the hash marks come up these little red dots and then what you can do is right click and you can put order move up or you can go here and move it up where you have your sources move it down move it up there's two different ways to do it right click order down right click order move up like that so there you go with that hopefully y'all folks like this video like I said and it's something that will help you in your actual staging and production of your OBS studio um, video projects or live stream projects you can do this stuff live as well but I recommend for you to preset everything that you want in your actual scenes so you have different scenes this is scene whatever it's no number scene one scene two and then scene three this was the first scene initial scene that I was working on that I wanted y'all folks to 
you know, get at least the intro to this actual video. And then this is scene one. So you, like I said, you can change the backgrounds if you wanted to change the background colors. And say I wanted it to be white because, sorry about that, we're on the camera. Let's go. We wanted it to be white. We go to select and then just pick the defaulted custom color white. And that will put it into a better background. Now, I did make another video about, um, well, my previous video to this one, I should say, about the color issue with that halo that will ha hang around your actual camera, your web camera. So let's, hold on, let's get this out of here and let you know a little bit as a bonus to this video about the halo. This halo glow around your actual camera does affect the quality, the overall quality of your actual videos or live streams. So with OBS, it's pretty hard to remove. I'm going to show y'all folks in another video how to do that. If y'all folks want to get to that video, it's going to take a little while. I'll put it up and I'll make sure I put a little link at the tail end of this video. Once I edit it, I'll put a link to it and y'all folks can get to that. Just give me some time. It might take maybe a day or so. So come back every now and then and you'll be able to check it out and see that video. Or you can look on my videos playlists or my YouTube channel. The playlist, I'm going to put a link in the bottom of this video's description area so y'all folks can get to that playlist for OBS. It's not just my videos. I curate videos from other channels so you can also get really good, high quality tutorials from other YouTube creators that I'm not really affiliated with and I don't even know. I just watch their videos and they help me get some ideas on what I should work on with my actual OBS and my setup and my virtual sets, etc. So if y'all like that, there you go. I'm out of here. Mike Pugh signing up. I'll see you in the next tutorials. Peace out. Thanks a lot for checking out my video, folks. If y'all folks want to check out the next one, it's up here. And you can also hit that little circle at the top to subscribe and you can check a previous video for this OBS series. If you check the bottom of the video's description area, you'll be able to get the actual playlist. I'll put a link to the playlist and hopefully y'all folks choose to get OBS as well. I'll put that link down there. OBS Studio is pretty awesome. And that's all I got. I'm out. Oh, next up, what I'm going to be doing is showing y'all folks how to use the actual studio section for OBS Studio. I forgot to add that, so stay tuned for that in my next tutorial. I'll see you next time. Peace.